What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. So today, thanks to the guys over at Thermaltake, we're taking a look at their BX1 Smart RGB power supply. Now, I must admit this was primarily sent over for doing case reviews and things like that with all the other work I do with Thermaltake, but I did say I'll take a quick look at it and we'll see what it is. So, the main things about this, this is, I, I do apologise for the packaging, I can never get them back in the box, but this is a 750 watt, 50, uh, 80 plus bronze rated power supply. Okay, it does have RGB lighting, but it comes with a five year warranty and the main capacitor in it, the big juicy ones, are actually um, Japanese, which they, everybody says are better quality. So in the box, you don't get a massive amount, but what you do get is you get a power supply cable applicable to the country of which you have purchased or the country from which your power supply originates. So if you do buy this from a supplier in another country to yours, you may not get the correct power supply cable, but here in the UK, you get a UK cable. You also get power supply screws in the box. We do also have the power supply and its cables and a few little bits of paperwork. This one's mostly sort of like warnings and a little bit of info about plugging them in and things like that. So the power supply itself. Now you may remember if you've had a look through this channel in the past, we've actually reviewed what appeared to be a very, very similar power supply in the past. It was a smart RGB power supply, just like this one. But one thing I had about that power supply that I really didn't like was the fact that they used mustard and ketchup cables. Now we have actually got, not only have they gone all black, but they've even gone for sort of the flat typed cables and I really like them. I was actually quite surprised. I was just expecting them to put black cables inside the sleeve, but they went one step further and they've actually done quite a good job. Now I'm gonna have to straighten all these out because they've all got a bit messed up with me attempting to well they've been in it's been in a few systems already by now um, but let's go through this and see exactly what we have so we do have obviously let's find dig them all out there we go you've got a standard 24 pin power supply uh, motherboard cable you do have your 8 pin EPS for your power for your CPU we do then have a pair let me find the other one there we go We've got a pair of graphics card cables. Now each of these cables has two 6 plus 2, or in other words 6 and 8 pin connectors. So you do have the choice, if, you only, if your graphics card requires 6 pin, simply don't plug this little bit in. If you do require it, clip it to the side and then connect it as you would normally. And they are daisy chained so you do actually have a total of 4. So you could run SLI on a pair of graphics cards that require up to two 8 pins off of this without any problems. This particular one is a 750 watt so it should actually have the guts to manage that. We do then have a pair of cables with serial ATAs and what I liked about these, they've used the 90 degree type connectors. Now sometimes they can be a bit of a pain but we do have three 90 degrees and then on the end a straight connector and it's exactly the same on this one. Now you can see all of the cables on here are a good length and I can now, thanks to my mod map, actually measure them. Now the main 24 pin comes in at about 62 centimeters, 60, 62 centimeters. Uh, SATA ones do come out in at the longest and the longest length is actually about a meter. So your serial ATA ones are actually a really really long cable as you can see here. We do also have about the same length and we have Molex so we've got four four pin Molex connectors on here yeah and then we do also have a floppy connector. Um, you might be thinking that's weird but actually well it is a little bit weird not gonna lie um, but a few things do still use floppy connectors. I've seen a few RGB hubs recently that they come with what you think is a proprietary connector to plug it into like a Molex or a SATA. It's actually just floppy. The thermal tape ones use that. Um, so that's the cabling and everything on it. So we've got a decent selection of cables. 
they're all a decent length. Now, trying to cable manage this amount of cables is never ever going to be easy. You will have to deal with it in some way, shape or form. Now, if you've got a decent case with a power supply shroud, you can simply sort of bundle it all up and just tuck it out of the way. But at least now, they are all black. So the next question that you're having is, what about the actual power supply? So the power supply itself, we do have just a typical power supply. It is 155 mil long, yeah, about 100, 140, 150 mil long. So it's just a relatively compact one. That is a 120 mil fan there on the top with a thermal tape logo in it, just for a bit of reference. So it's not much bigger than a 120 mil fan. Standard width and everything, it is just an ATX power supply. We've got some thermal tape logos on one side. We've got some tech info on the bottom or the top, depending on whichever way you orientate your power supply. And then we do have on the back a power switch, your standard kettle lead connector and RGB. Now, one thing I did forget to take a quick look at, on the bottom here, under the tech specs, it actually lists the powers that this thing can supply. Now, this is rated at a 750 watt power supply, but the important things about power supplies is always the 12 volt rail. Now, in a PC, 12 volts supplies the power, uh, supplies your CPU and your graphics card. So, good amount of 12 volt is important. You may find on some really cheap like power supplies. In fact, I've seen it was a 750 watt power supply from some weird cheap budget brand, and it was rated at 750 watts. And yeah, it was a, technically a 750 watt power supply. But the 12 volt rail was only capable of something daft like 350 watts, which leads you into a lot of false, sen false sense of security there. You think, oh, I've got a 750 watt power supply. Realistically, you don't. Um, this one, this particular model here, okay, on the 3 volt rail, you've got 24 amps. On the 5 volt rail, you've got 18 amps, which works out about 100 watts combined for the two. And then on the 12 volt rail, or in other words, the important one, 56 amps, which works out at 672 watts according to thermal take. And in other words, you can have up to 672 watts of 12 volt products in your system and you won't have any problems. So that could be, I mean, 670, that's a lot of power. Realistically, this would power anything um, within reason without going daft and something like that. But like a 2080 Ti and, a, and an i9, it should be within the limits. Now I do always say, Quite a lot of um, manufacturers out there, I think, and a cooler master have got one. Um, a few power supply manufacturers have them. And the best thing to do, if you're trying to figure out what power supply to do to buy, is to go onto one of these online power supply requirement calculators and see what they say. Now, those um, calculators are always a little bit lenient. They do add in a factor of safety, and it's always good. I would not recommend drawing 672 watts down the 12 volt rail of this 24 7 and expecting it to last forever i mean it's got a five-year warranty on it and it this isn't a cheap budget well, okay it's a cheaper budget power supply but it is not a cheapy cheapy nasty thing um so yeah it probably would be all right but it it's just not the best thing to do they, they are not their most efficient at 100 percent load and things like that but then the only other thing we really need to look at today is the RGB. This is an RGB power supply after all. And as you can see, we do have some lighting. Now, this is RGB, but it is not syncable or controllable by any means, shape, or form. All you can do is press the button on the back and cycle through the options. Okay, and that is literally your only choice is to cycle through the options. You've got sort of like static, you do have off, and you do have sort of like fading in and out, and a few different colors. Um, but the power supply is relatively quiet. Um, I've had quieter ones, I've had louder ones. But overall, yeah, it's not obtrusive, and that is the most important thing. I've had, had power supplies that in the past have been quiet, but obtrusive because they sort of came out like a high-pitched buzz that was irritating but then I've had power supplies that were relatively louder but it was just a low hum and it was you could forget about it a high quick high-pitched squeak screech 
they get irritating. So that is the Smart BX1 from Thermaltake. What do I think of it? Um, it's not bad, if I'm honest. Um, it's not a bad power supply. But there's a premium for the RGB. And at the end of the day, it's power supply. Now, if you're using something like a, a Thermaltake P5, and that is sitting on show and you can see it, yeah, okay, quite cool. Um, if you've got your, your computer on your desk, okay, shining out the bottom might provide a bit of underglow. But RGB power supplies, I don't know, it's just something I've never really got on board with. Like I say, it's not a bad product. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. It's a well-built power supply. Now, unfortunately, I don't have full load testers to actually say this particular power supply is amazing or this particular power supply is just going to go pop. But it's past all the 80 plus ratings and everything. It is from Thermaltake. It does have a decent warranty. So I can't say too much on that, but there's a premium for the RGB. You could buy yourself a slightly better quality power supply from a different brand or even from Thermaltake and skip the RGB. Um, or um, like their TR2S I reviewed a while ago, you can get effectively similar type power supply for a little bit cheaper. But if you have the option to be able to put that on show with its light going, yeah, I, I can understand it. So that's really about it for today, guys. We've got the Smart BX1 RGB power supply from Thermaltake. I quite like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some links down below as to where you can check them out. Um, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, not a problem. And as always, leave any comments or suggestions down below and I always take the time to try and go through them all. On that note, guys, that is me for today. Thank you very much and bye for now.